Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, host of The Weekly Report, your look at news about programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city is once again expanding its open data catalog. We are adding open housing data that will include the permit, inspection, and violation history of all properties in Kansas City. Some raw open housing data is already available on the open data catalog and complete housing information should be available this fall. Housing websites such as Trulia and Padmapper have committed to integrating this data onto their web pages. This will allow the public to obtain open building inspection information in an easy to understand format. The city is adding this information thanks to a partnership with Code for America. Visit the city's open data catalog at data.kcmo.org for more information. As part of the city's commitment to safety, the city is evaluating traffic signals, focusing on traffic, safety, pedestrian, and neighborhood needs. Based on recent community feedback, 20 traffic signals will return to full service. 17 others will continue to transition to stop signs. At those 17 intersections, crews have added significant pedestrian improvements, such as enhanced crosswalk striping and new signage. The city has appreciated neighborhood feedback throughout this process. We listened and are taking action to respond to your needs. For more information on this process, please visit kcmo.org traffic. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Well, I tell you, it was raining today, but I feel the sun was shining because we finally are at the point of knowing the Aldi store is going to be here. We have been working on this since 2004, nine long years. And so we're really excited because we're no longer going to be in that food desert classification. And our residents are going to have access to fresh food and fresh meat and a grocery store. So we're happy. We talk about making healthy choices about food we serve our children. But if parents don't have anywhere to buy those foods, it's just all talk. Well, today is an exciting day for the 3rd District. Uh, we are extremely excited about what this project means for uh, this community, but the, also what this project means for the entire city. This is an economic booster for uh, the entire city, but then also for the residents in uh, the 3rd District who don't always have access to fresh produce. Uh, I'm so excited that we've been able to work extremely hard uh, to make this project happen, and it's an exciting day for uh, the 3rd District. This grocery store is going to enhance the lives of the residents of this area. Uh, what was a food desert now does have an oasis here. At Aldi, what we're interested in is trying to bring our stores to all the communities of the metropolitan area, from Johnson County to Jackson County, Platte County, certainly the city of Kansas City. We've opened uh, four stores in the last uh, five years in Kansas City. This is our uh, fifth newest store and uh, we're just excited to uh, have the residents of the neighborhood be able to buy groceries at 30 to 50 percent less than where they can buy it elsewhere and to be able to pay the same prices here that uh, they would pay at any of the 1,350 Aldi stores across the United States. They're going to do customer service training. We think that's extremely important because we want people that shop here to have a good shopping experience and probably even more important is that they're going to hire their employees from the community and uh, we're going to be having a job fair at our office on 37th and Woodland for our Aldi's to do that. And finally, the people that lived around here who had to give up their homes, uh, we insisted that they be treated fa fairly and um, Aldi's was fair in purchasing their property. It's about uh, 17,000 square feet. Uh, it will be a five aisle store, open ceiling, uh, uh, brick construction. Um, like I say, it would be the brand new, newest Aldi store that would open uh, today in Chicago will look exactly like the store that we'll build here and open in December. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Ivanhoe today. This uh, neighborhood is on the road to really being truly a great place for good people to live and everybody's going to want to live here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. 
An exciting and nostalgic evening awaits with an upcoming concert by the Spinners and the Emotions called an evening of classic R&B. The concert begins at 8 p.m. Saturday, August 17th at Kemper Arena. The legendary Spinners are known for such R&B classics as Mighty Love, Then Came You, and I'll Be Around. The Emotions, an all-female soul and R&B group, are best known for the hit single, The Best of My Love. Tickets are available at the Municipal Auditorium Box Office or through Ticketmaster.com. Also during August, the Central Veterinary Conference draws veterinarians from across the world on August 21st through the 26th. The conference offers lectures, workshops, hands-on labs, and team training for vets and their teams. A related meeting of the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association overlaps the previous event on August 24th through 26th. This conference explores and supports alternative and complementary approaches to animal wellness. Please be sure to welcome all of our visitors to Kansas City with a big KC smile. To learn about additional events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. During the 1970s, Ted Bundy was a notorious serial killer who eventually confessed to 30 murders of young women. Most believe the total number was much higher. In the early 70s, he was honing his kidnapping skills in Tacoma, Washington, where he encountered Elaine Crafton, now a clinical nurse educator residing in the Casey area. We spoke with Elaine last week. I did have an encounter with a young man when I was about 19 years old. Um, I was walking down the um, street near the University of Puget Sound campus when I was approached by a young man driving a Volkswagen Beetle pulled up to a curbside and um, wanted to talk to me, waved me over to his, his Volkswagen and said, hi, I'm not from around here. Can you tell me where there are any parks near here? I found out after his arrest that the individual who actually waved me to his car that day was Ted Bundy. My inner voice had told me, even though I was looking at a very nice looking individual who was very nice and clean shaven, clean cut, my inner voice kept saying to me, guys like him don't talk to you. Guys like him don't stop and pick you up. Um, so I, my inner voice was very persistent that day. I think that, it, it, you know, he was an individual who very easily made himself into whatever he thought the circumstances warranted. And I think that, you know, as a nursing student, I had an inner voice that had been um, taught to me or that I'd always had that said, you know, look around, see again, look up, assess it again. and. Even though it's not always obvious, I think that you, know, you listen to that inner voice and that inner voice helps to keep you on track. And as I like to say, from having your day ruined and you being buried in mounds of paperwork because you missed some small cue. And that particular day, that voice kept telling me that this was not an individual who normally would have talked to me. First off, you know, I, um, my instinct told me not to get in the car with this individual that day, and I think we do that. But had he had a cast on or had he, you know, said he was hurt or he needed some help picking something up or putting something into his car, which he did in, in later time, I think that I would have had difficulty not doing it, and I'm not sure if my inner voice would have told me not to. I would hope that it would have, that I, there might have been some small thing that I might have picked up on that said that, you know, this, this is not legit. I really believe that that inner voice everyone has. I really believe that you, you have the ability to tap into that no matter what your circumstances are. In this case, all those years ago, tapping into that inner voice saved me from getting into a car. In later years, that inner voice has saved me from having my day ruined because a patient has a heart attack and maybe, you know, it was just a little change in his color or his breathing pattern or something that went on and my voice said, look up and look again. 
and you look just a little bit closer, I believe that everyone has that inner voice and that inner voice talks to them. It's about whether or not you're gonna listen to it. Ted Bundy died in the electric chair in Florida in 1989. There are so many variables, it is impossible to warn women of all the circumstances that could lead to an attack. Therefore, it is their own inner voice that may make the difference between life and death. If something doesn't seem right, it's best to err on the side of caution. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Um, my name is Mark McHenry. Uh, I'm here today representing uh, the Kansas City, Missouri Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioners. Back uh, on the 1st of March, uh, myself along with Councilman Jermaine Reed, uh, City Manager Troy Schulte, uh, Deputy Director Terry Reinard, uh, Superintendent of Recreation uh, Mark Bolin, and your Center Director here, Carol Green, walked through the building and pointed out some things that needed some attention. So here we are uh, 120 days later and spending about a million dollars to make some very uh, important improvements to this community center. And you may have seen them already this morning. If not, go back and look at them when you get a chance to get inside. And uh, we're here today to acknowledge those nice improvements to serve the Kansas City community. It's a great day to celebrate. A great day as we celebrate and cut a ribbon of reopening the new investments from all new workout facility, not just have tacked uh, uh, workout facility, but we have all new workout facility. Uh, we have a brand new locker room. The sauna room right here is first to none, not second to none, but first to none, because nobody can compare to that. Uh, the, the steam room as well, everything. This place is rocking, it looks good, and I'm excited about today. So with that, we want to dedicate this and cut a ribbon here pretty soon, but I am delighted to introduce my colleague on the city council who I serve with who has been very supportive as well of making sure that this happens. She's none other than City Councilwoman Melba Curls, 3rd District at Large. Good morning to everyone. This is a great day. Uh, it was a while coming. I was just talking to Sharon Sanders Brooks. I remember in the previous council, we were down here talking about how old the equipment was and trying to get something done then. So it's been a labor of love. But uh, we're glad it's being utilized, and all, not everything is up to par, but most things are. And, and I think the tenacity and the uh, you know, stick to itiveness of my colleague and myself and staff at the Parks Department has kind of uh, helped us through. Sister Green has been on it too. So uh, I'm just glad that, that we're here and that we see this wonderful day. I'm going to pay my membership. I'm, I'm not going to swim. I'm going to kind of sit there and let the water kind of, you know. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm really excited about the day. And uh, tell your friends, and I want everybody to join so you can come back and uh, take part in all the equipment that we have and, and the meeting rooms and everything. So again, thank you for coming. We're very excited. Thanks to everyone. Okay, ready? ready? One, two, three. All right. <laughs> the city's Neighborhood Advisory Council is accepting applications for its 15-member council. This group meets monthly to discuss proposed city policies and make recommendations to the director of the Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department. They also participate in public hearings and forums. Interested candidates must apply by Monday, August 19th. Applications are available at kcmo.org slash kcnac or at the Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department located on the fourth floor of City Hall. Youth and their families are invited to celebrate the end of summer and another successful Mayor's Night Summer Program. It slides Rock the Block on Saturday, August 17th at Union Station. The second annual party will include family-friendly attractions and entertainment. For more information, visit kcmo.org slash Nights. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org and scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, then just click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.